Now that we've shown you the system-by-system system physical examination, what we'd like to show you now is the quick field assessment, the type of thing that you could be expected to do semi-independently, like in a hospital situation or something like that. Our equine volunteer today is Tootie, and Tootie is a six-year-old Irish crossbred mare. She's sort of a pet. And our technician volunteer today is Joanna Huckster, and uh, Joanna's going to help us out with Tootie here. Now, when you go through and do that quick field assessment, you're reviewing in your mind the whole time each one of the systems that we went through, but you'll see it proceeds a lot faster. First of all, we're going to start, like we always do, observing the horse. We've talked to you many times about that, so, but you want to be able to say, hmm, how does that horse look? How is he acting today? Uh, is he any different than yesterday? Uh, am I okay to approach this horse? Maybe you've done this horse ten times before, but this is, or maybe it's the first time you're approaching this horse. So you always just make that quick assessment there. You're looking for subtle things, very, very subtle. Maybe it's something very obvious like uh, a wound that developed through the night here. But um, you always want to make that assessment. Then you can go ahead and approach your horse. Everybody has their own order in which they do these physical exams. Myself, I like to start off by putting the thermometer in because it takes a minute or two to cook and get up to the right temperature. Now, this will keep you looking from looking foolish later on in life. Be sure to check your thermometer and make sure the silly thing is shaken down because there's nothing worse than having it go in there at 109. So now you need to ascertain either from the owner or the handler how you think this horse is going to be by having their temperature taken. See, I'm staying nice and close to her, picking up her tail. You want to visualize where you're putting your thermometer. There you go. Come on, dear. Just like that. Oh, sweetie, and I've got a nice garden variety clothespin to hook into her tail so I can go do other things. You don't want to leave a, a thermometer in their anus without something hooking it to the outside world. Dr. Forney, what other things are you doing while you're back at that end of the horse? Well, you'd be amazed what else I'm doing while I'm back here. You've got to multitask while you're doing this if you're going to get this done in a reasonable period of time. I'm looking to see that she's got good anal tone. If she's a mare, I'm looking to see if she has a vaginal discharge. You can actually look at her mucous membranes by everting her vulva like that. See if she's got any urine scalding. Maybe even see if what her tail tone's like, if you've got some concerns there. You're running your hands over the top of her rear end. So I've actually gotten a fair amount done while I'm back here. Mm -hmm. There's things like, you know, while you're back there, you're looking at, around the stall, you're looking for manure, you're casting your eyes down on the legs. There's just any right. number of things that you're going to be able to look at. Well, the whole time while I'm using one sense, I'm using my other senses for other things. So we're just going to start with listening to the heart. That's usually what we do. Um, remember we told you when examining the, the, the cardiovascular system, several places we want to listen to the heart on the left side. Notice how far up under that elbow she is. It's the only way you're going to hear those outflow tracks. So be sure that you do that. And she's going to listen to the areas over the valves where they have most sound there. She's going to move on to the lungs. Remember, we talked about the respiratory system. You want to listen to the lungs at several places. You want to hear a couple breath sounds at each site that you're doing. Now, normally, if the horse appears to be normal, the character of the respiration seems to be normal, the rate's normal, we don't use a rebreathing bag. We don't hold the, the breathing off in order to make them uh, take the deep breaths. But if we have any suspicion at all, that's what we want to do. Moving back to the abdomen, uh, listening for some GI sounds there, see if those are normal. So we're doing all this while we're on the left-hand side. It's a lot more efficient if we just can go through a couple systems, but we're doing it more geographically now. You're going to listen to the trachea. You can hear the breath sounds there, listening to see if there's any stertor, any increase in mucus, any abnormal sound. It's a good place to get a respiratory rate also. While she's there, just going to see the juggler vein, see the filling of that juggler. Now we'll move on to the right side. Okay, here we are on the right-hand side. Dr. Forney's listening to the heart. Again, don't forget, you're listening for murmurs, you're looking for, listening for rate, rhythm, character of the, of the heart. Move on to the lungs. 
Again, you're listening for the character of the sounds, several different places on this side also. Then you'll move on to the abdomen, two sites there, listening for the character and the number of sounds. Remember that there's a lot of variation in the number of sounds that you'll get from uh, the abdomen, the GI sounds. They can all be normal, so you have to make an assessment there. So usually I think Dr. Forney goes to the head from this point. Okay, so Dr. Forney's going to sort of observe the, the face, the head, looking for that symmetry as we talked about. Oh, there's, she's letting you see the mouth better than they often let you see the mouth. You going to look at the mucous membranes, do a capillary refill test, looking at the color of the mucous membranes, the moisture there at the color at the, the uh, mucous membranes, looking for odors, um, exudates, does the eyes working right? Um, you know, with fly masks, I don't like to examine a horse with a fly mask on. Do you, Dr. Forney? No, because uh, you actually can't see their eyes. <laughs> you have to take it off. And, you know, people aren't aware that if you leave those fly masks on 24-7, it creates an extra moist environment inside there, and uh, the horses are, are quite prone to conjunctivitis. They have to take a break from those masks periodically. It's true. But there's a lot we read by the horse's eyes, aren't there? And if you can't see the eyes, it really makes us feel out of contact with the horse. Yep, it's really true. So while you're there, usually are run your hands under the, the, uh, the mandible there, feeling those submandibular lymph nodes and salivary glands. It's something we just automatically do every time we're at the head of the horse. Now, I think it's probably time to get the thermometer out. Yep. Just about now, I usually take the uh, thermometer back out of the mare. You know, I've spent a minute or two working on the rest of her, and you want to let your mercury thermometers cook for about at least a minute and a half. I'm going to take my little clip out, pull it out, stand nice and close to her. In my case, put your glasses on. And Tootie's temperature today is, oh, 100.6. 100.6. Okay. 100.6. What do you usually find the adult horse temperature being? Today... You know, it's a pretty warm day. It must be about 90 here. Oh, it is hot. <laughs> well, you know, they vary just like with people. You know, horses' temperatures vary with the time of day. Right. They vary with the ambient temperature. Uh, they vary with what they've been doing. You know, Tootie's just standing here in the shade, but she's actually sweating yeah. here. Yeah, she's a little bit yeah. you know, concerned and anxious yeah. about what's going on yeah. here. I certainly find, as far as the time of the day, that in the afternoon, 4 o'clock, mm -hmm. Uh, time when the horses got to, for the evening feeding is a time when often the barn people take the temperature. That will be higher than in the morning. Oh, yeah. So, Absolutely. so afternoon type temperatures, even in the wintertime, not mm -hmm. just the ambient temperature affecting that, but that's the diurnal variation that the horses will have. So there's really a lot of stuff that we learn about uh, the animal w mm -hmm. from the body temperature, isn't sure. there? Sure. Not, not just whether or not they're sick, but, but things like uh, you know, what they've been doing up until then. Mm -hmm. And certainly with foals, Falls run a little higher, you know, and that's the same is true with, with kids and, and with puppies and that sort of thing yep. is that their metabolic rate's a little higher and I put my upper limit for a foal on a cool day at 102. Now, if somebody calls me at 4 in the afternoon on a hot day and that foal is 102, I tell them to take it again when it cools off a little bit. But at 102, for me, that's when I start wondering if there's something going on with that foal. Yeah, I think it is. You, you just start to get your little red light going on mm -hmm. and makes you say, hmm, we better recheck that again. Right. We better think about, reevaluate things. Come back at eight. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Now the whole time I'm working with Tootie, what I've been doing is I've been looking at her legs and her musculoskeletal system. The examination of the musculoskeletal system in these little uh, brief examinations is brief unless you have some part of the body where you have a big index of suspicion. So I'm going to run my hands down her legs and I'll certainly always do that with the front legs. You may or may not get to the back legs, because if you don't have somebody competent hanging on for you, you might not be able to get there from here. And I like to take their digital pulses, because it's such a great indicator of problems down in the feet, even metabolic problems like laminitis. And I'll do that on both front feet. The other thing that will be happening is while I'm working with this horse here in the stall, is that... You know, I'm sort of subtly assessing their neurologic status, you know, how they're doing on their feet. I'll probably ask her to move around a little bit loose in the stall just so that I can make sure I'm confident that she's on her feet really well. 
But beyond that, again, unless I have some reason to be suspicious, there's not going to be a full-blown neurologic exam. You know, the secret of really doing a good physical examination is to sharpen your, your observation skills and to know how to gather the factual information that we want. That's right. We're interested in your subjective opinion. How, how the horse is doing? Do you think the horse has changed? You know, how's the overall horse's demeanor? What, what do you think is going on? Absolutely. But you also have to know how to relate that factual information, not just say temperature's okay, but the rest of the people of the team want to know what the temperature is. What is the heart rate? What is the respiratory rate? So that they can make their judgments also, not sure. just relying on your judgment. Sure. I mean, we also need that factual assessment also. That is the key to things. Uh, and it's very hard to teach that sometimes to your clients mm -hmm. also, that mm -hmm. you want to get that factual information back from them. Now we've shown you two different ways to do the physical exam. We've shown you that larger system-by-system -system exam that realistically no one's going to be asking you to do that exam. And then we've shown you the field exam, the sort of abbreviated exam where you're looking at all the systems, which would be the type of thing that you'd be asked to do pretty regularly in a hospital situation. You know, and you did a beautiful job at showing how quickly a thorough examination could be done. And this is something that they're going to have to practice. Sure. Well, I'll expect my tech to be able to do that, but you need to start practicing now because it's going to take a lot of times going through normal before you're going to recognize abnormal. Lots of practice.